So. Oh, hey everybody. Welcome to the next installment of Parenting Adult Children with uh, Mark and Portia and Mike. Mark and Mike Vote and Portia Vote uh, from Minnesota and from Illinois. Glad to have you on the show today. And one of the things we started talking about is that my daughter Skylar, age 27, is going to get married in a month and a half. And what are some do's and don'ts? when you're trying to help your adult daughter get ready. Only six weeks to go before the wedding. Yeah, yeah. And one of the things I said is, never under any circumstances say anything bad about anything. The makeup looks great, the dress is gorgeous, the colors are wonderful, the food is gonna be fantastic. And then Thank steer you, it from there. But don't ever say, I don't like the makeup. Never say the makeup looks bad on you. It's going to be only I'm glad you're starting so early. There's things to like in this color scheme. I know you're going to be experimenting with other stuff. It's really exciting to see that kind of stuff. Well, I really love the story you told, though, about her sister when oh. she came home with yet another set of um, makeup ideas from one of the stores. A makeup atrocity. We learned the hard way. Yeah. Don't. My daughter has a, an African mother and me, a Scandahoovian father. So she's right down in between. She's a caramel kid. Don't ever let anybody who's not a caramel kid, let let them try to do your makeup. That's just a reality, everybody. But what happened was, sometimes those people all take advantage of the new bride-to-be. They tell her she looks good. They don't give good lighting. They do stuff, a charger, $75. She's driving 50 miles home, looking in the mirror in the real light. She starts off, well, she's kind of wondering. Then it turned to she didn't like it. Then she's calling at 40 miles left to go. She really doesn't like it. Then she's calling with 20 miles to go. She's bawling her eyes out on the phone. Can't stand any longer. And she's got $200 worth of makeup in a bag that she's never going to use because she now she realizes how atrocious it looks. You could just imagine. Luckily, her sister, Nerissa, came to the rescue, called those people up, gave them a piece of her mind, threatened them with bodily harm, told them they were going to go. She went, they drove all the way back, totally refunded everything, and Skylar continues to look. But the good thing about it is that there was a peer who could advocate for your daughter. Yeah. Because if you had done that, it would not would have, have worked out it well. It wouldn't have worked out the same way. Yep. So if you don't have a sibling where that type of relationship exists, Hopefully you can develop a relationship with someone else in the peer group where they can advocate for yeah. for the bride because again it's just really treacherous to try to give your own child that kind of feedback. I like some of the word choices you had earlier which were um, so Sky, great job on starting early and so experimenting. Excited. We're so excited. You should embrace the experience. Try several things before you make up your mind. Don't. This is a once in a lifetime thing. Yep. Enjoy looking at it from all the different hint, ways. Hint Remember? that it's a journey. Get them to understand it's a journey and that there's things they can like and things they don't have to like about today's effort at makeup, about this particular one. Go find another one. Find well, one closer. Too with dresses. You know what else? I, um, yeah, dresses too. You know what else I've learned about the, how to guarantee the success of a wedding? Because it starts to get crazy right now. Moms start spending way too much money. They start talking about decorations, flowers, two months out. everything. Yeah, it's two months out and it starts to go crazy right about this time. And you realize they're going to start running out of money. And then there's going to be a panic. We're already at the fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars $16,000 mark. And that's a cheap wedding around here. You, you realize all hell is going to break loose when they run out of money you realize there's really only a, a perfect wedding, a successful wedding is a three-legged stool. There's three things that you gotta worry about. You gotta have good food, you gotta have good music, and you gotta have good booze. Nothing else matters. In fact, it, it, nothing else matters so much that if you don't nail those three things down, if one of those three things is bad, it doesn't matter how much else you do right, they're gonna bitch. Oh, the food was bad. Oh, the, the music was lousy. Oh, 
the beer stopped early or they had a cash bar. We had to buy our own stuff. Wah, 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 wah. And then flip it around. If you take care of those three things, the liquor is endless and it's free. The music, we got $2,500 into our DJ. The, and he's going to act as an MC as well through the whole thing. So he's going to introduce people. They're going to have their own little intro walk, stuff like that. Everybody, it doesn't matter what else goes wrong. There could be nothing on the tables. There could be, the lights could go out. It could be raining outside. Nobody will care because they'll say, wow, it was fantastic music. The food was great. We got so drunk. Whatever it takes, that's all they're going to remember. They're not going to remember anything else about that wedding. It's the, those three things. So my job as a dad right now is to listen to everybody, listen to my wife, listen to my daughter, even listen to my son-in-law, let them talk and ask and make all these different decisions. But keep in mind those magical three things. That's where my contribution went was to nail down all of that stuff. The rest of it doesn't matter. What else? More lessons on adult parenting. Well, I think this is a great topic. Just how do you navigate with uh, the bride when you're doing a wedding and it's your daughter? It would be interesting to have a follow-up perhaps with the groom's parents to see what uh, things they felt they did well, what they'd like to do differently. Yeah, well, certainly all those things can happen, yeah. yeah. I, I can tell you another challenge that we're facing and that's the invitee list. Every bride yeah. makes this infinitely long list and they're just so giddy that they're gonna invite all these people, it's gonna be fantastic, and then they realize they gotta get down to 150. So they struggle down to the 150 number. Everybody's fighting on this side. Mom invited too many people, dad invited too many people, the husband-to-be invited too many people, etc. They get down to the 150 after this amount of pain and then people start canceling. I'm going to be busy. I'm not going to go there. And then the bride feels jilted. The bride feels insulted. The people she was fighting for to get on that list have turned around and canceled on her. My God, that is a hurtful feeling. People say, oh yeah, I've got a party I'm going to. I'm not going to your wedding? Wow, well, I was shocked. What are some of the emotions that you find yourself grappling with, though, as dad? Because I'm sure some of our listeners... Um, would feel reassured if they hear some of the things that you've struggled with. I, I so can, that, one thing comes to mind right now, the moment uh -huh. you said that, is I looked at my daughter when she was first having this kind of pain and saying, gosh, Dad, some of these people aren't coming. And I looked right at her and said, Skylar, on the day of the wedding, we're going to guarantee those three things, the food, the music, and the, the liquor, the drinks. And then you're going to spend the whole evening looking at whoever did come and they are exactly the people that you wanted to come to the wedding that day you're going to look around and you're going to tell yourself whoever is there they're exactly the people that you wanted to be there whatever music is playing is exactly the music you were hoping was going to be played the food that you're eating was exactly the food that you wanted to eat that day the drink that's in your hand is exactly what you were hoping you were going to get to drink that day. Well, I and really, I like that a lot because we were talking earlier about happiness and how it's yep. being content. The content, yeah, we mentioned content that. Content with what life sends you and I think staying higher and just kind of reassuring her that um, happiness is going to result and that she has to exercise faith because isn't yeah, marriage, just be happy. marriage is a lot about faith. You're starting this I new swear. life and you have faith that it's going to work out and a great exercise is just doing that as a family no matter what comes up in the wedding planning whether it yeah. be makeup, clothing, uh, guest list, last minute venue problems, letting the whole family exercise faith that they can still be happy regardless and it's part of the whole joyful experience because some of the things that you go do go wrong are the very things five years later you're going to all be laughing and toasting laughing. about it how it was a, a great experience yep. so yeah i like where you're going with that telling telling your daughter hey it's okay there's some unexpected things that are going to happen and you learn it's, it's part of the story it's part of the, the story. story of skylar yeah. and kyle yeah. the, the story of the wedding yeah. Oh my God, and the makeup smeared. Oh, but everybody will turn around and say, yeah, but the food was great. 
oh yeah, and the music, oh god, it was amazing, that DJ, what was his name? That's all that they'll remember, and they'll say, oh yeah, remember when Skylar ate the cake and her makeup smudged? Yeah, that was so cool. Not catastrophic, it was funny, it was memorable. So, and that's what I'm working yeah, on doing. Being careful not to get sucked into, even though they ask you, so dad, what should I do? That's got to really slow down and ask yourself if yeah. that's a smart thing. First, I tell her, breathe, because you don't have to decide today. That, see it? Just, you, you do not have to decide today. None of this has to happen today, especially with the makeup, with the dress. Even the dress had to be adjusted a little bit. Because the industry really pushes these. Oh, they all want, want it done. If you don't advanced. do it two years ahead, yep. you're not going to get what yep. you want. And to them, it's just a business. So it's like a book, 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 book. Book that pipeline, book that pipeline. That's all they think about. So they put these kids under all this tremendous pressure where the wedding's not even fun. And like you said, Portia, it's supposed to be a moment of blessing where you're standing in front of what you believe in and you're standing in front of your spouse and your spouse's family and your community and you're making a public vow to be true to one particular person. That's supposed to be the most joyous time of, the, of your life. And you've got all these people around that are in charge of making it a blessing that are pressuring the crap out of you until they almost want to, they just scream. My God, that's the hard part, is fending off the people that have just made up industry out of this nonsense, and you fall back to the three-legged stool. Those are the things that matter, because those are the things that you can control. You can control whether or not you, everybody's got a drink in their hand. You can control whether or not the DJ's serving up good music. You can control whether or not the food's good. But you're not going to be able to control the weather, so you can't get bent out of it. You can't control whether or not a drink's going to get spilled on your dress, so you can't get wigged out about that either. Just focus on those things, and then focus on just enjoying whatever happens that day. If the power goes out, if only 50 people show up out of 100, that's exactly what we hoped for. Those are the best 50 people we could have hoped for, and we're going to have a hell of a good time, a memorable time, a storybook time with those people and that food that music, those drinks, that venue. Ta-da! If an eagle goes by, icing on the cake. Hey, that marks the 12 minute mark of what was supposed to be a short middle of the springtime episode of Parenting Adult Children. This is Mark Vogt and Portia Vogt and Michael Vogt in the back seat with our freckle-faced dog Freckles. We hope you enjoyed it and we'll uh, and the next episode is going to be what to say to your grown-up kid joining the armed forces. Joining the Navy. The next episode is going to be about Gavin and what that feels like. <laughs> so tune in. Tune in next week, guys. Talk Wait, to you later. Uh, that's a wild ride. <laughs> in fact, we might record that tomorrow. Wait, All right. And the one after that is going to be a how to handle your aging parents. <laughs> that's because not they're like having children, too. <laughs> I swear. All right. Bye, everybody.